Hi, I'm Brian Smith and I'm a celebrity portrait photographer. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to photograph everybody from Anne Hathaway to Tony Bennett to Adrian Grenier, Adrian Brody, Sam Jackson, Tim Daly, Sir Richard Branson, and Donald Trump. I've got the greatest job in the world because I get to drop in on the lives of famous people for a little bit of time and get to know them. Welcome to the Mark Silver Show, Advancing Your Photography. We connect you with photographers who have mastered their craft, sharing their insight and showing you their photography tips so you can go right out and use them. Brian, thanks for joining me on Advancing Your Photography. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having me out here. Brian, tell me about your approach to photography and the type of work you really, really love to do. Well, I'm a celebrity portrait photographer, so I shoot all ranges of people, everybody from famous actors and, and athletes, CEOs, but I could be, it could be just as likely that I'm photographing your next door neighbor. So one of the great things about being a portrait photographer is it's a chance to drop into people's lives for five minutes, five hours a day. Um, and meet people from all different walks of life. What about shooting celebrities? What, what's the magic that goes on there? Well, celebrities are fun because it's like they're the type of people you kind of want to meet. So it's this great entree into their lives where, you know, you get to spend a little bit of time with them, find out a little bit about them. Um, sometimes the challenge there is when you're photographing somebody who's been photographed a lot is how do you create a defining photograph of somebody who's been photographed a thousand times so we usually try to have a lot of fun with it and just let them let them be themselves and not over direct things sometimes if we've got a great concept we'll go with that but if they want to take it in, in another direction I think it's really important to give them the space that it's a collaboration instead of here come we're gonna do this to you so how do you draw the kind of emotions out that you're looking for I think I think one of the things that we always try to do is keep the set as small as possible. I think, you know, we've all we've all been to the sets where there's like um, a cast of a hundred behind the photographers, and everybody's talking on their cell phones and blackberries, and um, it, you know, being in front of that is very disconcerting. So a lot of times, it's like even if we're set up in a huge studio, we'll find a little corner and kind of, you know create a tiny intimate space for the subjects where it's really all about them and being in front of the camera and they can kind of zone out everybody who's around. As much as I can, try to keep those people in a separate room so it's just, you know, myself, a stylist, and the celebrity. And it's, it, um, a lot of times getting rid of all those distractions, um, I think people react better to the shoots. Makes sense. What are some of the key things that you use every time you pick up a camera or even before you pick one up? Well, I think what I try to do, like before we even you know, bring the subject in, before we get a camera, I always start with lighting. You know, that's sort of your foundation. It's like you get the light as close to what you're going to expect with the person, so really all you've got to do is fine tune it. So you, if you create this situation that somebody can walk into a situation that's beautifully lit, they look great, suddenly they're, they're at ease. Because, you know, one of the first things that they do is, you know, subjects that have been in front of a camera a lot generally know when, they're, when the lighting is good. And you want that just not to be a concern. You want them, um, all of the technical aspects to kind of fade into the background and just to be about them. Any kind of nuts and bolts lighting tips? Well, I always start with a, with a single light source. You know, a lot of times if I'm doing an environmental portrait, it's a single light source that's um, augmented by the available light. So it's like, you know, an ambient fill and um, a light on the subject. And being able to light your every situation gives you the control of kind of putting the sun where you want it. So sometimes I might want a very, you know, natural soft look other times I kind of want to chisel the light so that it's very dramatic and, and almost like you're, you're lighting a sculpture in a museum. So I think a lot of that goes in ter terms of like you've got all these options and 
what is going to work best for your subject. Brian, how do you get the mojo in a photograph? The mojo in a photograph. If I knew how to get the mojo in a photograph every time, it would always be there. I mean, yeah. sometimes you get really, really lucky. I think the best thing that you can do is kind of put all the elements into place and then be willing to shake it up and go in a completely different direction. And I think that's, I think that's where the mojo comes from. It comes from planning and then being willing to deviate from that plan when you know, all of a sudden something much better presents itself. You have to make sure you don't get in the way of a better photograph than you'd planned. So um, you plan ahead, but then, you know, plan to be flexible. Gotcha. All right. Any final tips for photographers who just want to become better at their craft? Well, I think one of the keys to getting better is practice. It's go out and shoot and shoot and shoot. And I think, you know, you get, you get more comfortable with technique. Uh, you know, it becomes something that you don't focus on. I think one of the keys to particularly working with people is not to have the distractions of, you know, how do I light this? How do I technically make this work? You want that to become second nature. And it's like anything in life. The more you do it, the more comfortable you're going to be with it. You got it. Brian, thanks for joining us on Advancing Your Photography. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Be sure to subscribe to our blog now to stay updated on my show, and we'll give you tips and insight to keep advancing your photography. Also, check out our guests' website for a closer look at their work. I'd like to thank SanDisk for sponsoring our show. Tune in to our next episode of Advancing Your Photography for an inside look at another photographer's world. Until then, this is Mark Silber reminding you to get out and capture your own images of life. <laughs>